All right, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, just going to do a quick video uh, to kind of show you uh, what I use, uh, what we use for the uh, uh, incubation process. So uh, this is a, I think it's a five foot uh, Coca-Cola cooler. Um, you can get these fairly cheap. Um, you know, certainly deals are going to be different in different places uh, depending on where you live and that type of thing. But what you're looking for ideally is one that doesn't work, where the, the cooler doesn't work, there's something wrong with the compressor, something wrong with the refrigeration, that type of thing. And people are just giving those away, sometimes free, sometimes uh, 100 bucks. I got this one for uh, $20, so I got it off of Craigslist. Guy had it in his garage just sitting there. I think he thought that at some point he was going to get the refrigeration recharged and the compressor fixed and that type of thing, but never got around to it, just wanted to get rid of it. The reason you don't care if it's working or not is because you want to take out all the stuff in the bottom anyway, which is all the compressor, the refrigeration stuff. You do want to be careful when you're doing that because you are working with uh, you know, refrigeration kind of Freon type stuff. So, uh, you don't want to be breathing that stuff. So just be careful with it. Um, uh, every incubator I've made, I take all that stuff out. That's really the heavy, heavy part. So I take that out in the garage and then you can put it anywhere, uh, anywhere you want in the house. The great part about these units is that they are sealed and insulated and all that really, really well. And on top of that, they've got, uh, nice big glass windows. So whether you're using a big unit like this, you know, this will hold, uh, I think I did the math. It's about 30 or so clutches. Um, um, maybe it's 20. Um, but anyway, a lot of clutches uh, of eggs. I've used the wine coolers before, which are you know pretty much the same things. They're just uh, they're just smaller uh, and hold hold less clutches. But it's the same process and all that. So I strip out all the guts from the bottom, which is down behind this panel here, and then. Uh, uh, just kind of go to work on it. So uh, the first thing I get is the the THG um, heat tape. Uh, I buy that from Reptile Basics. This is the 11 inch or 12 inch wide. I use the black Gorilla tape. I think it sticks better than the uh, than the tin foil stuff. I also think it uh, looks better than the foil tape, um, and seems to hold hold uh, much better, much longer. So I use that for uh, pretty much everything to do with reptiles. So even to hold probes in and the racks and that type of thing. So. Uh, you get enough that you can cover. Uh, in my case, I just did the back side. A lot of people will do the, the sides and then uh, kind of make a U-shape around. I don't. It almost makes it uh, seem like it's too much heat uh, in my case. Um, so I just run it along the back, and then I do run it along the, along the floor a little bit as well. Um, I've got the racks. This didn't come with racks, but I went to uh, a Home Depot, got like a 10-foot length of this uh, racking and then I just took a Dremel and cut it to size so that all the racks are the same size. Uh, you can buy these clips at Home Depot too, uh, which I did. You can see these came with these clips, uh, but I had to buy the, the other white ones. The white ones actually look better. So um, so yeah, put those in there however many you want. You want to use the, uh, the tubs that you're going to use to kind of space them out so that there's not a bunch of uh, excess space that you don't need. But you know, you just do it kind of the way you want to design it yourself. Not a not a important thing as far as where those go. They're all they're all movable. Uh, then what I do is uh, I put a, a hole. I get a drill and drill the back. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but there's a hole there where all the the probe uh, stuff probes go through, and then also the uh, uh, the power cords and all that to the heat tape, heat tape go through the back of that. Um, and then just lay it all out, put that in there, uh, do the duct tape uh, from the top to the bottom, try to make it as uh, good looking as possible. Um, so, and then I just run the wires. So I'm using a, a Herbstat 2. Uh, you can see both 89 degrees on the top of it and on the bottom of it. Um, so what I do is that, that number two, uh, the number two probe is actually this very bottom probe here. Uh, it just hangs down there. It does nothing whatsoever. It's not powered. There's no, it's not connected to any heat tape. You can see on the back of this, it's this probe here where there's no, no outlet. Um, or they, there's an outlet, but nothing plugged into it. So the Herbstat is certainly uh, varying the amount of electricity that's coming through that, that outlet, but that outlet's not connected to anything. So it doesn't make any difference. So I have that one set, I think at like 85 degrees. 
um, almost as a kind of low warning. But the only reason that's in there is so that I can be measuring the temperature super accurately um, in two different spots of the uh, of the incubator. One down towards the bottom, which is pretty close to that heat tape, you know, ish about a uh, about a foot or so, and then right smack dab in the middle, hanging down. Uh, from the rack uh, so that it's uh, not going to be interfered with with the tubs once those are in there. That's the main probe. That's what's obviously measuring the uh, um, the temperatures in there and controlling the temperatures in there. So that's the uh, that's the number one. You can see it, it fluctuates uh, a tenth of a degree. Usually it just sticks straight standard on there, but very, very uniform throughout. I'm not sure you can even hear it. It's really, really quiet, but the the fan of the uh, um, of the cooler is is running. That's just plugged in. It just runs all day, every day. So it does have some circulation in there. I don't think that's too important in the smaller uh, the smaller incubators because of their size. But in this one, you do want. Uh, I think a fan is important. In fact, if I turn that fan off, the the degrees, the temperature variance uh, ends up being about a degree and a half or so, which I don't want. I want it. Uh, pretty much stuck at the same uh, the entire time. So, and that fan does that. Um, I did notice, so inside the, the top of here, behind that is, uh, there's a light. Here's the nice part too. I didn't even have to do this. This, this guy already had this locked. I'll try to do this one hand. So it has a little padlock. Inside here, there is a light uh, that does turn on and lights up, makes it really nice. I don't use that. I've even switched it out to a uh, plastic. This is a plastic LED bulb to uh, have it have less less heat coming from it, but it's still too much heat and it makes it uh, much more difficult for the uh, uh, for the temperature to stay, stay super steady. So what I've done, and I'll add a few more of these, is I've got the, uh, these submersible LED lights. Um, that has a little remote control. You can turn it on and off. Um, let's see, we'll turn it on. You know, so that's probably what I'll use is just the white, but you can also mess around if you wanna do red, you wanna do green, you wanna do bluish, you wanna do more purple, uh, whatever, uh, whatever your heart desires. Uh, and then the, you can, you know, go a little lighter, you know, go a little, a little more light. So, um, whatever you like, but they don't put off any heat at all. So I, it's very easy to regulate that way. And I can just use the remote. I can walk up, uh, turn it on and kind of see inside, you know, kind of see if there's any movement in the eggs, if there's stuff pipping, that type of thing without actually having to get in, pull out the tubs and uh, uh, disrupt the temperatures. No big deal if you open it up and have to disrupt the temperatures. It's, uh, you're gonna do it very briefly and the temperatures get right back up. Uh, very very quickly, but especially on a big unit like this uh, You know, you don't want to have to have it go up and down up and down too much. Uh, I probably will end up putting some uh, I don't know maybe six or seven two liter bottles of water just fill them with water uh, onto the bottom what that's called is a, a heat sink. Really what it does is it heats up all that water so that it kind of uh, maintains those temperatures a little more steady when you do open the door. So currently if I open the door, all that warm air is gonna come out. And then when I close the door, that heat tape has to just work harder and harder and harder to, to, uh, to get it back up to temperature, which is really no big deal. Having a little bit of fluctuation from time to time is no big deal. But if you do have that, uh, 89 degree water, which is what it would be when the uh, incubator heats it up. Um, it's, it's, it keeps that warmer inside there when it's, uh, when you open it and close it and that type of thing. So, uh, super straightforward, not much to it. Uh, works like clockwork. Uh, everything hatches perfectly well in here. Um, great ventilation, uh, super, super cheap. And, uh, you know, it having a lock on it was just a bonus. So, uh, kids or people that are over or whatever can't uh, accidentally leave it open or or even look inside. There's just no reason to be inside there. So um, again, Herpstat 2 is what I use to run it. THG uh, 12 inch, 11 or 12 inch uh, heat tape along the back. Gorilla duct tape uh, holding that tape in. Uh, these submersible lights off of Amazon. I think they're 17 or 18 bucks for a four pack. Um, 
and then that's it uh, and a cheap uh, cheap cooler from uh, from Craigslist so uh, if you have any questions at all I'm happy to answer them just post in the comments or if there's different videos about uh, reptiles reptile keeping reptile breeding um, that you have questions about uh, shoot me a comment. I uh, would love it if you liked the video, if, uh, if it was something that was useful for you, and, uh, and hit subscribe, and I'll do more of these uh, videos if, if it seems like people are, are interested in them. I try to keep the videos pretty short. Uh, um, this is going to be probably the longest one in a long time, but uh, yeah, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and uh, see you on the next video.